You gotta wait for folks to join. You gotta wait for folks to join. Hi folks joining for reading read about uh read out loud wild about books so we're just gonna wait picard is picard is excited don't worry he's just you know shy he's in my lap picard look look picard there he is hi hi snuggle lump hello so we're just gonna wait for folks to join so we'll give folks another minute or so and then we're gonna read Wild About Books by Judah Sierra. Picard, look. Everyone's telling you hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello. Look, you're on live Instagram. Let's just hope he sits with me for the entire time because Picard is notoriously camera shy and might just jump off my lap when he feels like it. Oh, look at that. Sage says, hi, doggy. Hi, Sage. How are you? Can I pet? <laughs> can I pet that dog? That's Rochelle saying, can I pet that dog? Yes. Picard would always love lots of belly rubs and lots of... Let's just make sure he calls me again. Nobody usually calls me in the morning. Somebody called me today. Okay, let's get started. Wild About Books by Judy Sierra, pictures by Mark Brown. So, you can see like the opening pages, it's the pictures, really nice illustrations about books at the zoo. Someone keeps calling me. Nobody ever calls me this morning, on Friday morning. Okay, it started in the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer and sat on her chair. At first, all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. So the animals are watching from their various habitats. And this is the bookmobile. And Molly's ready. She's so ready for them to come and read. By reading aloud from the good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose, a wombat, an oryx, a lemur, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of skinks. Look at them. Curious. More curious. Right, Picard? Picard actually doesn't mind books. He's just really camera shy. In a, flask, every be in a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Elephants. One of my favorite animals. And we see a zebra. There's a monkey on the back of a horse, I think. This looks like a rhinoceros. This looks like an armadillo right here. Lion, giraffe, a zebra. And the elephant's favorite animal down here. See? Forsaken their niches, their nests, and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Choosing thin books and fat books and cat in the hat books, and new books and true books, and heaps, heaps of how to books. Giraffes wanted tall books and crickets craved small books, while geckos could only read stick to the wall books. <laughs> Get it? The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter, who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Raccoons read alone and baboons read in bunches and llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. More pictures. And here are the raccoons tucked away in the trees, reading alone, just like how we would tuck away in a, a comfy chair to read. 
Hyenas shared jokes with the red-bellied snakes, and they howled and they hissed till their funny bones ached. There's the red-bellied snake. And the hyena's laughing. Hyenas are known to laugh. Well, they sound like they're laughing. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right there at the zoo. Such as, why were the bandicoots books overdue? Uh-oh. Overdue books, not good. Yeah, overdue books aren't good, Picard. I know. I know. You want to finish reading? You want to finish reading? Let's finish reading. Gently, Molly taught lessons in treating books right. For the boa constrictor squeezed Crichter too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up goodnight moon with their paws. Giant termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. See? The Wizard of Oz on the, the hill, on the termite hill. They should find something else to eat, even though, you know, books are fun. I should, but they could be yummy, but we shouldn't eat them. And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pictures right off the pages. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. Those are the penguins, the group of penguins there, writing. They look so official because of how they're, they're black and white like that. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. <clears throat> A cannibal twig silently devours a leaf, eating, not eaten. The scorpion, ugh, pretentious. Dung beetle, roll a ball of dung, any kind of poo will do. Baby beetle, bed. Ugh, stinky. A dig for treasure in my enchanted castle, a rotten apple. Boring to the millipede. Hiss. His, 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 That was the giant hissing cockroach Picard. That's what they sound like. And and the scorpion thought it was redundant. Stinging reviews indeed. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barbary ape. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulit surprise. With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork and a new, to build a branch library there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check the books out. We can put them on shelves. And they did and they do up to this very day. Three chairs for the Zubri. Hip, hip, hooray. And that's when you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They were snug in their niches, their nests and their nooks, going wild, simply wild about wonderful books. So you see visitors to the zoo now. The animals are all reading and they're very content to be reading. They don't want to talk to anybody right now. So that's the end. So what I like about this book are the pictures. I love the illustrations in the book and I love that it rhymes. Um, and I'm also wild about books so I'll always get down with it. Anybody have any questions about the book that I've read? Pick Picard is Let's see what Picard is doing. Here's Picard, right there. He got very comfortable after I read, or as I read, so his his face is on my lap, <laughs> and he's relaxing. He might be overwhelmed by his uh, by his Instagram Live debut. Uh, thank you. It is a super cute story. I agree. I have this, had this book for a long time. It's I actually have children's books here because when my nephews came to visit, I want to make sure that they have something. Oh no, Picard, no barking. If someone passes too, door, too close to the door, Picard's like, no. 
so i have children books here i also have dr seuss that my um my godmother gave me when i left college it's all the places you'll go which was a good reminder you know even as you get older it's good to remember all the imagination and stuff from when you were when you were a young kid oh and that's rebecca in the chat is saying um she felt like she read this book when she was younger probably that's my younger sister when she came to visit Akoma is asking what inspired you to read that today i read this book because i like the illustrations and i like reading i like books that encourage children to read and the illustrations are really colorful they're really um well done and then the book itself i like the rhyming because i think that that makes it fun to read so i got to have fun reading which is always good and then i thought it would be fun for the kids who are listening in to hear a book that rhymed it was lyrical you have the sounds from the different uh animals in the zoo so i thought it was a pretty book good illustrations and it rhymed which i like does that answer i hope that answers akoma's question oh miss trinita is saying we'll have to add it to our library i'm i'm happy to add it to the flock library it's so much fun it's so much fun and let me see yeah if i take the dust cover off it still has this fun cover here so even when you take the dust cover off you can still get the beautiful illustrations and it's in full color oh and this is the back of the book see the back of the book is even illustrated too i think that's an antelope i think those are the the horns that's a raccoon being solo reading um this is an alligator or a crocodile i forget how to tell the difference that's a bunny and that's a bird chilling on the alligator or crocodile's nose Oh, and this is a giraffe in the background, but a giraffe is so tall, you can't see his neck. Although the raccoon is just hanging out on a giraffe's neck, like, wow. Okay, you're welcome. Which animal in the story is your favorite? That's from Brina, I think. Um, let's see, which animal is the favorite? Hmm. I know my favorite animals, I love dogs, as you can tell. And I really love elephants, but in terms of animals... Okay, so the llamas reading dramas in their lunches. Look at that line. And the llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. That's awesome. This is something that I often do, like when I take a break from work, I'll read something. Sometimes it's not a book. It might be an article or some, uh, some news story that my friends have shared with me online. But this, the llamas reading during lunches, like every opportunity to read, gotta take it let's see so that's that okay i'm seeing that Koo says his favorite animal is his lion a lion's a fun animal does he roar like a lion because that's lots of fun too can walk around the house roaring roar. hi picard i don't think picard likes my animal roar no he's a hard critic like the scorpion <laughs> Okay, does anybody have any more questions or any favorite animals they want to share? Hmm? I don't know what Picard's favorite animal is. Hey, Picard! He does have a couple stuffed dragons that he really likes. Like, one is actually on the floor over there. Stuffed dragon. He has a stuffed duck. That was one of his first um, toys when I adopted him. Uh, he has a stuffed chicken that was a gift and what else does he have what else do you have he has a stuffed elephant too a pink elephant you should have brought your animals to show off dude see he won't look at the camera so shy oh oh look at the airs look at the airs woohoo hello hi bud hi buddy any more questions in the chat thanks so much for everyone who joined in again it's wild about books by judy sierra pictures by mark brown you can probably get it at your book and then for flock students are going to see about adding this to our library oh crocodile and blue whale okay akoma likes the crocodile and the blue whale blue whales are huge are they the largest animal on earth is that the blue whale or is that the killer whale i don't know i don't remember but but whales are pretty cool they are pretty cool they're so big but the whole they move through the water is so graceful all right um so we're finished reading you can check our social media channels because i'm gonna save this live and pass it on and the flock staff is gonna share it 
yes rebecca will be sharing this i think oh a coma thinks that the blue whale is the biggest animal okay so maybe we can check that that will be our task for today um will you be sharing this live on the flock page uh yes i believe um uh, morgan who has been handling all our um, social media stuff like a like a boss um we'll be sharing this on the flock page and maybe also at the on the flock facebook page because i'm going to make sure i save it and then um send it to her and she'll upload it and of course she'll let us know when that's done all right oh google says yes okay google says that the blue whale is the biggest animal on earth imagine that so big and just moves through the water that's pretty cool okay um so we're gonna log off now unless anyone has any more questions about the animals or anything like that the tongues alone can weigh as much as an elephant whoa that's a lot that's a lot Picard. can you imagine a whale tongue weighing as much as an elephant yes so remember to tune in every friday at 10 a.m for flock story time right flock story time every friday at 10 a.m where someone else will read a really fun book and i think the book that's coming up next week is about kindness which is a really important thing for all of us to to practice and exercise and extend to other people right picard so every friday 10 a.m and then recordings of our story time are available on social media channels check this instagram or flock's facebook page and of course you can always check out flock's main page flock.org uh, flockdc.org i have it saved on my phone so i don't even remember it but type in and google for love of children dc and we'll come right up all right take care everyone bye have a great day